Wow, guys, I can't imagine what it must have taken to tell the story. Darren, let's start with you. Yes. It's fascinating, so I'm not even going to ask why you chose the story because there's so many questions, I yes, mean, yes, around yes. this, but the challenges to actually tell a story like this and do it in a balanced way. Yes. How, how did you, where did you even begin? Um, I think we, I, we, we started with the source, you know, with Ellen, and, and Ellen, um, off, you know, opened herself completely up to us. So we could, like, for months to sit with her and share stories and unearth, you know, what led to the situation. Mm. Um, so, so just in that, just having that complete access to her help us come up with something that is as close to the truth as we, as we mm. can get. Um, and then this year, being surrounded by supportive artists like Jill, people that are disciplined and, and, and do their research, um, yeah, all supported into a balanced storytelling. Jill, what was it like for you to get into the head of Ellen? Well, when the story broke in 2007, I followed the story. I also, I was, I felt so much compassion for her because as a resident of Cape Town, you're not a stranger to tick and the effects thereof, you know, it affects you all around. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I met Ellen, I drew a lot from, you know, she's an inspirational woman, she's strong. We connected, we cried, we laughed, we shared stories, we had things in common. I spent time in Lavender Hill feeling the rhythm and the musicality of the place. I did a lot of research on her um, and I also isolated myself. I moved away from Kensington where I'm from mm -hmm. and I went to live in a tiny place near the sea so I could just be alone, be silent, kind of run on the beach and empty myself of myself and really absorb Alan. And I stayed with that character for the full five weeks that we were Did shooting. you find at any point that that, that you were a little judgmental? Did you find that, were you questioning who is this woman? How could she have done this? Did, did you have that conflict? Not at all. Mm. Not even when the story broke. Because unfortunately we're living in a situation where 11 years on after Abby's death, absolutely nothing has changed. In fact, it's gotten worse. Mm. Um, in Cape Town the situation is dire. We're living in a war zone and I know it's only not Cape Town. Yeah. So I am angered and also fueled by that in terms of the fact that so many of our people are voiceless, not heard, neglected communities and I understand Alan's plight and why she had to do what she do because there are so many Alans and Abies out yeah. there with absolutely no hope and no help and I'm hoping the story will make a difference. I mean, Darren, it, it must have also been, a, been a, a bit of a conflict for you as well, I mean, you know, to, to say on the one hand, like, like we say, we can be judgmental. There's so many yeah. points to debate about the yeah. story that you represented, like Joel says, those who don't have a voice, those who maybe can't bring themselves to do yeah. this. And it's a plight that you see throughout the country. I mean, not just on the Cape Flats. No, um, uh, you know, the point of the film was not to really present you with a, with a, a you know, we didn't want to give you like force for you. It wasn't propaganda. Yeah. We, we yeah, just sought out. tabloid either. Yes, suppose, yes. Yeah. We just wanted to tell the story as close to what happened as possible because the, the real problem was that most of Ellen's, most of the media surrounding her was just reduced to headlines, you know, mm. Cape Flats mother murders the mm. son. Mm. And our job was just to unravel that mystery and to show people this is the circumstances that led to it so that this is a better understanding of what's going on there, mm. yeah. And just Ellen herself, I mean, she, she, she's obviously seen seen what, what we're all going to uh, see from, from Friday. Did you sit with her and watch this? This, this final product? No, I wasn't there when yeah. she watched it. She watched it with the producers, and that was also the only time that she watched it. She's supportive, she's at every premiere. She's unbelievable, she's a phenomenal yeah. woman. Yeah. Yeah. But she won't watch it again. No, but she's happy with the final product. Yeah. Her opinion was at one point the only one that mattered to me. Yes. Yeah. And I asked her, and she said to me, I'm happy. And even if it just changes one person's life, yeah. yes. I will be happy and fulfilled. Yeah. Darren, you wanna, did, did, I mean, how did she react? It, it, it was, it was difficult. Um, you know, the film is, is close to, it's about two hours, but it took, a very, it took much longer to get through with her than that. And we had to, you know, we had to pause it every now and then for her to recover because there were certain scenes that obviously struck um, yeah. some nerves. Um, but at the end, and we were, we, were, we were willing to, the reason why we showed it to her very early on was we were willing to, if there was something that really bothered her, we were willing to change it. So in essence, she had final cut in a way. Um, but, you know, gladly at the end she, she, she felt that it did the story justice, even though it was compressing eight years yeah. of trauma into yeah. two hours, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we were glad to get the endorsement. And the community itself, the response, if you've received any, if, if, if anybody has, has sort of gotten wind of what's in Yeah, this? I mean, we've showed the one or two people that are that's from the community and, um, you know, there's been a common response and I think people are usually, they over emotionally overwhelmed because I think the story strikes 
a nerve that is so common. And we were surprised the other day we did an interview and someone called in from Boxburg, Boxburg yeah. who was going through exactly yes. the same thing. And all we thought we were doing was telling the story from the Cape Flats. So we're finding not just the people from the community, but people from all around South Africa starting to talk about it. We're getting yeah. messages on Facebook and Twitter. Yes, I'm sure. That's, you know, there's so many people going through this And thing. probably feel the same way, that this is the only way to stop their child. Jill, I see you want to, you want to add. <laughs> yes. yes, I also want to just interject. People can follow our journey on um, Twitter and also obviously Instagram and Facebook, the Alan Pucky story page. Mm -hmm. And on that note, I also want to say that abroad, we've, re we've also been making waves. Rotterdam, Seattle, Poland. Yeah. Um, and, you know, our, our film industry is making a difference abroad. And people are sitting up and noticing. So I want to encourage the South African movie, mo uh, the South African public mm -hmm. to go and support our movies because unfortunately our public is buying pirates when the rest of the world yeah, is taking yeah, notice so yeah. we need South African citizens to get behind our movies because you're contributing positively to our employment rate yeah. to our industry and yeah our, can, our economic growth and we have stories we have amazing heartbreaking stories to yeah. tell yes and, and, and our own stories deserve to be up on the screen thank you very much uh, Jill you. Darren it's been an absolute honor I certainly thank am going to try and, and, and I am not going to try I am <laughs> going to catch that one thank you, thank baby you so much and I'm going to catch that one thank you very much uh, you so that's much. the the Ellen Packy story, and uh, it certainly is uh, definitely mind blowing. That's